Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Hello, everyone, to what I think is going to be a pretty darn interesting episode of Training Unleashed. Before we get started, of course, I need to thank our sponsors, C-Suite TV and C-Suite Radio. Without them, we wouldn't have a show. They're really tremendous partners. Today, my guest is Lisa uh, Baker, and she's with Ascentum, a company that she founded. Uh, not going to get into her background too much, but just let's just say high-powered Fortune 500 kind of career. And I'm going to ask you the first question is, you have an interesting name for your company. So for my listeners, I want you to know, I think this is going to be a very interesting episode because she's got an amazing background and she has a very different twist on something that we all know is critically important. So we've got that tease going, but why don't you just tell everybody about the name and why you chose it? The name of my company, Ascentum, I chose it for the first root part of that name, Ascent. I am all about training, educating, helping people to ascend from one level of success to the next. What a cool name. What a cool name. And that's really the theme of what we're going to be talking about is how do we help people within an organization get to the next level? And how do we help ourselves get to the next level? Which I think is one of the most important parts of being successful in the world of training. So why don't we maybe just start for a second here. What was your impetus to leave the Fortune 500 world where I have no doubt you were amazingly successful and the passion around starting your own business? Yeah, it was a process for me to make that decision. But the real impetus for it was I felt I could be much more effective in helping people to level up and grow outside of the organization than I could inside the organization. Having the freedom, yeah, yeah to um, say and do some things that, you know, may be more unconventional was really the impetus for that. I like that. I like that. So a lot of what you do is coaching, is you help individuals take themselves to that next level in their career. And I know what I was listening, thinking, oh, well, coaching is important, but we, Evan, you've interviewed a lot of coaches. And that's true in part because I do think that being, <laughs> excuse me, supporting the individual in their growth is critically important. So coaching is a critically important skill. But you have kind of a twist to it, which is a little financial, and you have a process called GROW. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so GROW um, in my practice stands for gain insight, realize new possibilities, overcome obstacles, and win at life. And it is both the process that I use to help people grow as well as a methodology for moving from where you are now to where you really want to be. Cool. Let's dig into that G. Yeah, the okay. G, gaining insight. That It all starts with insight. And that is the process of gathering the information that you need. So a lot of times inside of an organization, a person has a new skill that they want to develop or they're trying to get to their next level and they're struggling with that, but they're not sure why. And so you got to do the work to understand what's preventing you from moving to where you want to be. What skills do you need? What connections might you need, et cetera? And so we start with gathering that information. Why do you think so many companies fail at giving clear feedback to their, their employees? Because people I don't like giving bad news. <laughs> that's it that's it or they feel like they're worried and people don't about, like hearing it either <laughs> right right they, they they're worried about hurting someone's feelings really is yeah. what it comes down to and it's tough to do that to give what might seem like negative feedback in a way that is constructive that keeps the person at the end of that feedback intact when i give constructive feedback 
I almost always start with the following, which is real feedback is a gift that people only give to people they care about. So I'm giving you this feedback because I care about you. If I didn't care about you, I would not be giving you this feedback. Is that good? Yeah, that I think that's, I think that is really good. And it comes from a place of honesty. And I think the other thing that I would add to that is real feedback is respect. Ooh, you have I to like really that. respect a person and care about who they are to give them honest feedback. Yeah, that's true. Now, this isn't a show about kids, but I can tell you, I have some kids that love feedback and some that don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, let's move on to the R. So the R to me is really the fun part. And that's about visioning and realizing new possibilities. So once you have the insight that you need, now you can take that information and start to figure out what do I do with that now? Where do I want to go? What's now possible for me since I understand what the challenges might be? I know where I want to go. I know what I'm great at and where I may want to improve. Now let's think about what's possible. So let's just take a moment and dig into this one deeper because I think this is very important. I think people, when they have a vision of where they're going to go in a company, are much more likely to stay. It's when they feel like they're a neutral and that they're not growing that they look for other opportunities. Yeah. But furthermore, I think the younger generations value this pathway more than older generations. And I'm curious if you've noticed that trend too. Yeah, absolutely. They value a pathway and many of them feel like that pathway should be straight up and really mm -hmm. fast. <laughs> So part of helping people to vision what's possible is expanding their thought process and beliefs around the way careers grow, because it's not always linear. Sometimes you take some side steps or what might even be perceived as a step back so that you can ultimately reach your destination. And that's okay. And it's all good. Yeah, makes sense. So a little bit more on the O. Oh, the O overcoming obstacles. That for me is all about planning. You know, life naturally brings challenges and obstacles our way. And in that challenge of growing your career, you're going to run into some things that maybe you didn't expect, but some you can anticipate and plan for. And if you have a plan, it makes it much easier to know what to do when those things come up because you've already prepared. Wow. I like that. And you you are right, people have them uh, or people are going to have them if they're moving forward in their career. So I, I like that. Okay, let's dig deeper in the W. Yeah, so the W, now that is the best. That's all about winning. Winning at life, I say, because it's beyond just your career. Your career and, and the work that you do is so much about how you impact the world and that shapes really your life and your legacy. So winning is about defining what success looks like. For each of us, that's something different. Um, and so getting really clear about what success is for each individual is so important. Could not agree more. And in fact, I think part of the problem that people have is because they don't define success, they never feel success. Yeah. And you need to enjoy the journey. And you need to have those benchmarks of success as you move forward. Yeah, okay, absolutely. So yeah, so and how I do you know when you've arrived, right? If you don't have a destination or a goal for what success looks like. Okay. So I know that part of who you are is you incorporate finances and understanding finances into the coaching process. So how does that work into the into the grow system or or the system you use? Yeah, it's it's so important. You know, many people who focus on careers omit any work around finances with one possible exception and that is salary negotiation. I think finances are much more important than just negotiating your salary because it affects your ability to live life on your terms and be prepared for whatever life may bring. 
And so I include finances as a way of helping people plan for their future and securing their dreams. Okay, now I'm going to ask an interesting question. I know that you work with your clients, some as a business itself, and then some as a direct personal coach. I know for myself in my career, my company hired a coach and gave me a, a career coach, which I greatly appreciated. My first thought when it comes to finances is a company shouldn't be doing that because it's out of proportion with the relationship between an employer and employee, but a career coach could do that. Now, you obviously know a lot more about this than I do. So with that, I guess, preamble, do companies need to be careful about coaching people on finances or am I overthinking it? Or is it something that really should be done with outside coaching? Yeah, that is a great question. I think there is a space for it inside the, a company. And here's why. Companies are talking about finances anyway. They're offering you a job that has a salary. They're offering you a benefits package. All of that is finances to me. And so helping employees at the very least understand the full compensation that is available to them from a financial perspective and what that means I think is essential. Well, now that you say that, we we did that actually. We actually took and said, this is your salary. Here's your benefit package. This is what it's worth. It's how much we're putting in your 401k so people could actually see what their total earnings really were. Well, very interesting. Very interesting. So when you're working with a client, how do you define success? I don't you define success for them. They do. Success for me as their coach is seeing them realize their goals and dreams. Nice. Nice. I like that. Maybe take a moment here and talk a little bit about your recommendations for a training department to kind of implement the ideas that you're sharing. In a little bit, we'll talk about how you could specifically help them. But, you know, what suggestions would you give to our listeners to bring the growth concept, the growth concept, into their business and to support people with coaching within your organization? Yeah, I think that they can do that in a couple of ways. The first is that grow process where you're starting with the insights and then visioning is something that any organization, any training department can implement around career or any other topic. The second thing that I think is really key that is bringing in a more holistic approach to training that addresses a broader base of needs for your employee than just their career. So bringing in an element like finances or something else that may be relevant for the employee, because you got to know they're thinking about those issues and it's affecting them personally and therefore comes and affects their ability to do their job. So to the extent that you can train around those things and help them to grow more holistically, the better off, better employee you have, the more engaged employee you have, better for the bottom line of the company. I like that. I like that. So now let's talk about when you work with somebody directly. What does that look like? What, what kind of experience is that for the person you're working with? Yeah, when I work with someone directly, again, we start with, you know, sort of a consultation between me and them to ensure that there's going to be a good fit between me as a coach and what they're wanting to achieve. And then we do, if there is a fit, we go through the grow pro process the same as I would in an organizational setting, but it becomes much more personal because now we're talking about one individual's goals around one or more topics like career and finances and working with them over time to achieve those goals. That's very cool. Okay. Um, who's the ideal client or person at an organization for you to work with? 
the ideal person for me to work with inside an organization is going to be someone who is within the training or HR department who is responsible for bringing in speakers, coaches, trainers to help their employees. Interesting. What do you say? I never, I didn't even go on this track. What do you speak on? Great question. I speak on all the, the topics that relate to the three pillars of a centum. So that's first one is around connections. How do you have the right people in your sphere of influence so that you can grow your career? Second pillar, career, right? Topics around how you unleash your superpower and level up your career. And third, finances, how you take control of your finances so that you can live the life of your dreams. Well, those are good topics and they're topics people don't talk about which i think makes them even more important because i think people avoid those topics okay we're getting close to the end of the show and i know that people are impressed by you tell us about your company tell about us about who your company's ideal clients are and the type of services you offer yeah so a symptom as a coaching practice is, as I said, based on those three key pillars, connections, careers, and finances. And I firmly believe that those three working together form a solid foundation for success. My ideal client is that high-performing professional who feels stuck and they want to know how to move forward, whether it's taking their career to the next level, getting their finances where they need to be, having the people in the sphere of influence, that personal board of advisors that can help take them to where they want to be. Cool. Now, I know you have a really nice and generous offer for our listeners. Would you please tell us about it? Yeah, I'd love to. So, in the area of finances, I am all about helping people to train their mind, to shift their money mindset. And I'd love to offer your listeners my new ebook that's entitled Financial Therapy, Change Your Beliefs and Change Your Life. That ebook comes along with a workbook that will allow the person to work through all of the topics around their money mindset and beliefs so that they can grow. So to get the free offer, to get the financial therapy ebook and workbook, you need to head over to ascentum.teachable.com. Ascentum is A-S-C-E-N-T-I-M. Ascentum.teachable.com. And the Excellent. code is free book. Free book. Like it. I do think it's really important that uh, people really understand their financial health and and uh and have financial goals so uh, i really appreciate your offer very much thank you for the opportunity to share i think you're the first to make that kind of offer where you're really helping people around the financial mindset which i think is powerful lisa as you know we always end the show with this simple question if you had one idea to share with our audience what would that one idea be yeah, the one idea I would share and what is foundational for Ascentum is connections. And that is have a broad, diverse group of people in your life that can help you get access to the information and ideas that you need to grow. I like that. So it's like almost like a personal advisory council. That's exactly it. Having your own personal board of advisors is essential. And there are at least six distinct roles that I think are important to have on that personal board. Okay, let's hear them. What are the six? I know we're going past one, but we're going to do it anyhow. <laughs> the first role that you need on your board of advisors is a coach. That's someone who's going to help you move from where you are to want to be. The second person that you need on your board is a mentor. That's someone who can help you in a specific area that you want to get stronger in. The third role that you need is what I call your hero. That's somebody who's already doing what you aspire to do that you can look up to. You also need to have your colleagues 
peers that you can go to for support. You need a champion. That's somebody who's your cheerleader, who encourages you and inspires you on. And last, and probably the most important role is a sponsor. That's someone that has the juice to get you the things that you need. They can hire you or recommend you to be hired for the job that you want. That's a really cool idea. Really cool idea. Lisa, I want to thank you so much for being a guest. I want to thank our listeners for listening. Without you, we would not have a show. And of course, I want to thank my friends at the C-Suite TV and radio for all of your support. Everyone have a great day. Training Unleashed is brought to you by Tortal Training, specializing in e-learning and interactive online training solutions for corporate, government, nonprofit, and franchise organizations. Tortal makes effective training easier. Just go to tortal.net to gain access to real-world tools that can make a difference. That's tortal.net, T-O-R-T-A-L, tortal.net.